Kale Beck here with Coulter Martin, a uh, young strong man that trains, comes over to train, been doing his programming for a year. He doesn't have the most uh, access to strongman implements, stuff like that. Just trains in a regular gym, comes here every now and then when I have the time. Just signed up for his first contest, so I thought it would be a fun little thing. Like all these questions that he keeps asking me about signing up for a contest and kind of what went through your head. You know, and I'm sure a lot of people listening to this are hesitant to sign up for a contest as well. So, right. it's, you know, it's starting strong, man. So, sign up for your first contest. What, what, what do you think when you you saw the events? You saw it was you know somewhat local. It's what three hours from here. It's about three hours from here. And what, what are you thinking? Like before you met, before you sent me the events and asked my opinion, I looked at it. And the first thing head. that went through my head was, I think I could do most of these events. Okay. And, and and that was kind of what what first. Whenever I look at the list of events, I look at what the weights are, what the events are, if I have any confidence in the movement, and if it's something that I feel like I could be competitive in, because mm -hmm. whether I win or not, I mean, that's obviously the goal, but what I want to do is be competitive. I want to compete with myself and with other people to right. better myself regardless. You want to do something that's within your ability. Exactly. Yeah, because you, you said, we, we looked at some of them coming up, and, you know, there's different levels of contests, even, you know, even if they're novice, some novice contests might be twice as heavy, almost, as, as others. Right. I'd say this is more, very much a beginner's level contest, and that's something, you know, it's important to do, uh, just to, you know, people say, like, how strong you need to be uh, to do your first contest, and I always say, like, the, they vary so much from contest to contest, what the weights are that you just have to pay attention to upcoming contests in your area, past contests, and kind of gauge where you're at. Uh, and that's what I said. I said, this is all stuff that's, you know, I, I don't think anything's a stretch for you. It's just you need no. to get more comfortable with the with the movements. Um, what Like, not doing the contest, what thoughts would you like? Like, what, what was what, what was uh, weighing on, you know, obviously you decided to do it, but what I, factors I, were you like, yeah, I probably shouldn't do this? I, I think the hesitancy came with just familiarity with the implements. You know, I, I don't have much experience with, you know, axles or with, you know, circus dumbbells or, or, or certain implements mm -hmm. that are that are listed in the events. And that's kind of where the hesitation came from is there's obviously a learning curve there. It's not just a matter of strength. There's also a technique. There's a strategy. And, and, and being my first competition, that's a lot of stuff to consider mm -hmm. when you're coming into something brand new and, and you don't really have any, any, you know, I don't have any competitive experience outside of a team sport. So to go into a solo competition and have to kind of think for myself and, and strategize and kind of look at how only my performance is going to be and nobody else's. Is just kind of where I was. I was starting to hesitate. Like, well, because it's stuff you've never done before. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's it's just a familiar. It's it's a familiarity thing. Yeah, but I think uh, the best way to get familiar with things is to be forced to. Yeah, pretty, yeah it's kind <laughs> of what which which is what I decided to do. I decided to just pull the trigger. Yeah, you know, jump in with both feet and you know, hell or high water, I'm going to go out there and compete and do the best I can. So what's the what's the process? For signing up for a competition, so the sign. So for so I, this, get this, I get this question all the time. You, I would think people just know that you do this, but you know, I'll let you say it. So, so, so on this particular competition, um, I found out about it on Facebook because I follow the gym just because I can. You know, I follow different gyms so that I, I'm, I'm aware of different sports that are happening or different events that are happening. And they listed the event, and I looked at the event, and it said you had to have a United States Strongman membership. And then you just had to fill out the registration and fill out the fee or, and pay the fees for the event. Mm -hmm. So what I ended up doing is I went onto the United States Strongman website, registered, paid my membership fees, and then I found the event that I was looking for because they have a section for upcoming events. Yeah. And then from there, I went in and filled out the registration for that event. So it was pretty simple. It was just, yeah. you know, there's no clear cut navigation as far as go here and do this and then go here and do this. You kind yeah. of have to say, okay, well, I need this and I need this. How do I get this and how do I get this? Yeah, I, I think that's something that Strongman kind of suffers with a lot where you're like, well, how do I do this? And I was like, what are you talking about? Because I've done it for 10 years. You just go, we register, you get your form. It's just, and so the same people that make the websites, you know, for, you know, like United States Strongman or Strongman Corporation kind of think this is, you know, just common knowledge. But if you're not doing it, it, it really isn't, you know, being... A former state chair for one of the federations, I can say how many times people came up to me 
and didn't realize that they needed a membership uh, to do a sanctioned event. You know, and, and that's some, you know, anywhere between 20 to $50 a year uh, based on what federation it is. Uh, so, yeah, these aren't as clear cuts. So that's why I wanted you to kind of explain that yeah. from, from your thought process. Um, as far as, you know, like, you know, obviously I, I do your training, so we're going to, you know, uh, switch, I'm going to switch things up and you have that going. So, right. um, training almost primarily in, you know, like a normal gym, like you think you train like a, a local Golds. Yeah. We go through the events, we have an arm over arm pull. Um, you know, with a seated route, you pull a rope into you, have an overhead medley, uh, you know, with log, uh, circus dumbbell and axle, not in that order, um, a tire squat and, and a, a stone over bar. And what, what else? A farmer's hold? Yeah, there's a, far, a static farmer's hold for time. Yeah. So you might think like you don't have that much access to so probably, you know, we'll try to meet up and do some of the more specific stuff on the weekend. That's right. pretty similar. You know, you, you happen to live closer, but. You know, when I did it, I would travel, you know, an hour or two hours just to do some of the events. And, you know, if you really want to do it, you got to commit the time to do that. Um, you know, it, I think it's important. But you can train the stuff, you know, somewhat in a regular gym. So it's like we're already talking about it. So, like, for the, the tire squat, we're going to um, we're gonna go slowly and we're gonna adjust your squat form to do something where you have to pause at the bottom and hit boxes. So you're gonna go down, you gotta go down slowly. You're gonna bring the bar to the pins, almost unload it, but not really, just you want it to set and then go back up. And as you get closer, you get better at kind of navigating that. Right. You know, so even if you're not doing an exact tire, you're still gonna be used to it. An arm over arm, you can do uh, the rope um, attachment at the bottom pulley and pull that into you, you know, for, for the overhead stuff, you're just going to get stronger push pressing right. and doing everything else, you know, your, your normal pressing, then do the actual implement access right. on the weekend. Um, stones just continue to get your back stronger. Farmers walk will do a little bit of grip work, you know, and stuff right. like that. But what's, what's your concerns? You know, like what are, what are the stuff you're planning on asking me? Once this cam once I turn this camera off, what are you gonna ask me? Um, I mean, really, it's just ideas come to me as uh, I mean, questions kind of pop into yeah. my head randomly. Um, questions that I'm gonna have, I mean, are are gonna be as I'm thinking about the events and as uh -huh. I'm kind of going through the steps sure. of doing the movements in my head. I'll be like, well, what about this? Um, like, let's say, let's say, for instance, um, arm over arm. I'd already kind of discussed. The fact that you know the seated the seated low row has an individual pulley system mm -hmm. for the same stack of weights, so I can adjust the weight to what I want. Yes, they point each arm individually. Yeah, right. I can also I can also alternate if mm -hmm. I set a handle on each pulley. Yeah, so I can pull one and then pull the other, so I get the idea of the movement of pulling arm over arm. Right. Um, as far as some of the events like 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 the clean, I've done an axle clean. Mm -hmm. That's not I've seen the movement. I've seen people. You know, they, they, they clean it up on to just above their belt and then they get it up to their shoulder. And so I don't, I wouldn't know how to train that movement necessarily in a commercial gym. So that would be something that I would probably ask you. Yeah. You know, how, how, how do I, how do I practice the clean movement without having an axle in a gym mm -hmm. and without, you know, having access to the implementation to, yeah. to, or the implements right. to practice the event. Yeah, well, I think the real thing for that is the, the number one advice I have for anyone who wants to do their first contest is find other people that have already done contests in your area, even if, like I said, it's over two, if it's two hours away, at least try to get up there once a month if you can. You're going to have a way better experience by putting in that extra bit of time because then they're going to train. You're going to have access to that style of equipment. You don't need to do it every day. You can just do like power cleans, hang cleans and stuff just to work on, you know, the basic, you know, uh, you know, different muscle groups that are going to be involved in getting your general strength, but then you can do the specific skill practice at least, you know, every other week, once a month, if you can, um, you know, even going to whatever, and if you're not sure where, where gyms are, of course, there's a list of gyms on sternstormway.com. And another good advice is to whoever's putting on the contest, they're going to be somewhat local, reach out to them and ask or post in that, in the event page on Facebook for that contest because they're going to know the, the local circle of people. And, they're, and those, those people are going to be able to, you know, you can watch YouTube videos and stuff like this all day, but those people are going to be able to actually show you in person how to do it. And that, that's really the number one advice. It, it seems scary 
to want to go out and you know reach out to somebody especially if you've like you kind of follow them and they, they deadlift twice as much as you or something or they're you know they're way more advanced but honestly like that's how they started most likely is they were you you know and and this and then you go so that's about it but i think it's a exciting now we actually have to train though right. so we're gonna go train we're gonna hit some of the events uh and uh you can we'll probably report some of that so you can watch that as well thanks for watching you know and uh wish uh culture luck in his first contest